Welcome to the Amersham Methodist Circuit YouTube channel and to this time of prayer and reflection on Wednesday the 22nd of April. I'm Nigel Wright, I'm one of the ministers in the Amersham Methodist Circuit. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the words of Scripture that reassure us of your presence. And we thank you for your words that inspire us to serve and worship you. Amen. We're now going to hear some words of inspiration from Psalm 28 and from Acts chapter 2. Psalm 28 To you I call, O Lord my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I shall be like those who have gone down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help as I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Praise be to the Lord, for he has heard my cry for mercy. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts in him and I am helped. My heart leaps for joy and I will give thanks to him in song. The Lord is the strength of his people, a fortress of salvation for his anointed one. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Be their shepherd and carry them forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, beginning to read at verse 14 and then verses 22 to 35. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. Men of Israel, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders and signs, which God did among you through him, as you yourselves know. This man was handed over to you by God's set purpose and foreknowledge, and you, with the help of wicked men, put him to death by nailing him to the cross. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. David said about him, I saw the Lord always before me, because he is at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will live in hope because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Brothers, I can tell you confidently that the patriarch David died and was buried, and his tomb is here to this day. But he was a prophet and knew that God had promised him on oath that he would place one of his descendants on his throne. Seeing what was ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that he was not abandoned to the grave, nor did his body see decay. God has raised this Jesus to life, and we are all witnesses of the fact. 
Exalted to the right hand of God, he has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit and has poured out what you now see and hear. For David did not ascend to heaven, and yet he said, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmist in Psalm 28 calls out to God, asks God, do not turn a deaf ear to me. Sometimes when we feel alone, anxious or despairing, it can feel as if God is far away or, or not interested in what's going on in our lives. And this may be the case for many during this difficult time when people are fearful, when people are physically isolated from other people, when people are concerned about family or friends or have even lost loved ones suddenly or unexpectedly. Peter, preaching to the crowds on the day of Pentecost, reminds us that when all seemed lost and even when he was in the grave, Jesus had not been abandoned by God. He reminds us that the same God who raised Jesus offers his abiding Holy Spirit to live with us and in us. He reminds us of the suffering that Jesus, God's own Son, went through for us. This is not a distant or uncaring God, but one who understands human emotions, one who understands human suffering, and he put his life on the line so that we could be in relationship with him. Amen. Shall we pray? Almighty God, we pray for our world and the Church. We pray for the Church in New Zealand and Australia, and echoing the words of the President and the Vice President of the Methodist Church in New Zealand, we pray for members of the Church. May we always see God in each other. May we be blessed with anger at injustice, at oppression and at war, so that we might work for justice, freedom and peace. May we be blessed with enough foolishness to believe that we can make a difference in the world so that we can do what others claim can't be done. We pray for the Nottingham and Derby district in our own country and we pray for mission across our own Northampton district and in particular for the work of a district mission enabler, Jill Marsh. And in this circuit we pray for Dean Way United Church and Gerard's Cross Methodist Church. We pray for the work of food banks in our own communities and throughout the country. And we pray for those who receive from them. And there will be now a time of quiet where we can bring our own prayers to God. Where we can pray for each other and give thanks. And we pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Go now, redeemed in love, renewed in faith, restored in strength and refreshed in spirit.
Go in the name of the risen Christ who goes before you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.